Welcome to the Manufacturing Masters Podcast with your host, Allison DeFord. Have you ever been in a meeting and felt frozen in fear because you had imposter syndrome? That feeling of, I'm not experienced enough. I don't belong here. Somebody is going to find me out. Someone's going to call me out. And I want you to know you're not alone. There's some interesting statistics we're going to share with you on today's episode that will surprise you. We're going to talk about four different points of how to recognize imposter syndrome, how to know if you really have it and if somebody else has it, and how to overcome it and move on and use it as a growth mechanism. And I'm really excited to welcome back today our founder, Darren Mitchell. This episode will surprise and delight you. And we're also going to leave you with the four words that I think can change your life around imposter syndrome. So everybody, get ready for some true stories, some vulnerability, and some great insights into a topic that we've all experienced and that's getting in our way. Everybody, here we grow. So today we're going to talk about a topic that may feel a little taboo for some of you. And I'm pretty positive that most of you have experienced this. I know I have. I'm pretty sure Darren has. I know you'll be shocked, but it's imposter syndrome. And it's something that is paralyzing, right? And it centers around self-doubt. So let's address the elephant in the Zoom, if you will. And let's really dive into imposter syndrome. And I want to talk about four different things today. We're going to talk about the fact that you're not alone. That's very important. And to understand what it is, to recognize when it's happening. Two, we're going to talk about that imposter syndrome may actually be a good thing. And this will surprise you. Three, we're going to share some true stories from yours truly of times when we have felt imposter syndrome and how it held us back. I'm pretty sure it didn't propel us forward. And four, how to recognize it and overcome it. And you're going to be really excited. There's, there's a bonus inside here. The four words that will change your life around imposter syndrome. So Darren, the person oh, that I, I think most people would say, he's never experienced imposter syndrome. He's so confident and you know, experienced. So I think it's important. I have felt imposter syndrome around you before where, and it's that, let's talk about what that feeling is. See, I'm being really vulnerable today that imposter syndrome is really that feeling of I'm not worthy or experienced enough or fill in the blank to be in this room right now or to be at this table. Would you agree? Yeah, I think it, that question usually pops into our head of times of stress. And when all the, the blood is pumping and the chemicals are going and you quietly ask yourself, I don't, am I the person who should be right here right now? And uh, it's a very scary moment when you start going, what the hell is going on? How did I end up in this room? Right, right. And I, you know, what's interesting is Harvard Business Review did a recent study that said 70% and and I venture to guess it might be a little more 70% of the world's top level executives have experienced imposter syndrome and the thing that I want to talk about today or at least recognize is I know I felt it a lot when I was younger you know when I was a young 20 something coming into marketing and then manufacturing and for years I struggled 
thinking, God, you know, I've only been doing this for two years or five years or 10 years. These people have been doing it for 30. But I think what we need to recognize is that it doesn't just happen when you're young, right? When you're a beginner, it happens in our fifties when we have been doing something a long time, right? <laughs> Mine's just covered up with color. <laughs> So I think that's important to address too, is yeah, what I think first of all, recognizing you're not alone. So if you're watching this, listening to this, know that you're not alone. We've all experienced it and we experience it <clears throat> today, even if we've been doing something a long time. And two, I want to talk about how to recognize, like, let's, let's talk about for a minute. How do you recognize when it's happening? Like, what about you, Darren? Do you break out in a sweat? Do you, what happens to you? Is it physical? Is it mental? Could be happening it... right now. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting that you asked that. I, uh, I saved an email and, uh, back in, 2010, um, we, so I, I own a manufacturing business, 130 employees. We're not massive. We're at $50 million We're growing and all over the place. We, we, uh, introduced a new product, but it was one step out of our channel. So my thought process was I'm going to hire the best salesperson who's in the channel we want to be in. So. We ended up hiring a 68-year-old who was a seasoned professional. Like if you've seen him, he could be your accountant or he could be presenting at the local um, council meeting. He was very premium and proper and knew his stuff. And I said to myself, that's the guy that we want. He has industry uh, knowledge. He has connections. He's doing, I'm going to sit back and you know, watch things happen. So the first thing he did is he took a trip to Mexico and when he, and I went, okay, that's weird, Mexico. I thought we were going all over the U S but sure, Mexico, you're, you're in charge. You know, something I don't. And he came back from Mexico and he uh, said, I don't think there's any business for us there. And I went, okay, uh, odd choice. I just spent $15,000 sending you to Mexico. Um, but Hey, you have the great hair. You have, um, you're, you're much better dressed than I am. Um, you have, you tell me stories about the industry all the time. And I'm like, yes, that's what we want. That's where we want to be. And the next thing that happened is he shared with me an email he got from Nigeria that they were looking for millions of dollars worth our products. If we just sent some money over and I went, okay, <laughs> this is not going to work. So, um, I let him go and he wrote an email and I saved the email to this day. And his name is Don. I don't even mind hiding in there. I won't share his last name. Maybe he's still around. And it's from December 10th, 2010. And it's called, uh, R E Darren Mitchell, the rooster. And it says, dear sir, is all good letters start that way. Right. You, sir, are a rooster in every respect of the word. You ruffle your feathers and make a lot of noise, but have very little use. You cannot fire me because I've quit. Those around you should be aware that when the sun comes up every morning and it goes on from there. <laughs> it was this long. And Dawn was so upset, he managed to send it to all of the staff in my company. So we finished, she got rid of them and nobody said a word until the following day that we finished a staff meeting and one person at the back of the room went, <laughs> and honestly, at that time, I had to start asking myself, am I really the rooster that he's, you know, there's lots of silliness there, but you start to reflect going, that just happened in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. And am I really the person at the front of the room just crowing? And should I be that person in that position? And now everyone's looking 
and questioning. And it was a, it was a very interesting time that I actually saved. I don't know why I saved it, but it was a very interesting time that I had to start looking in the mirror going, should I actually be the guy in this position? Because I'm supposed to be making all these big decisions every day. And I don't know, I don't, I have a degree of geography. <laughs> I could tell you where we were doing business. <laughs> um, but, you know, sitting in the room with the, the the banker and they're talking about ratios and you're going, fuck, I hope I look intelligent. <laughs> I look like an idiot sitting in the room right now and dealing with legal issues, dealing with patenting issues. And you're going, I I've never been here before, but I need to maintain the demeanor that get other people to believe I know the answer. And in that moment, you're starting to go, you know, am, am I right? And should I be the person who's in this position? And it can feel lonely and it can feel incredibly stressful to be in that moment. And I know you listen to lots of podcasts and so do I do and we're always trying to better ourselves. I listen to a lot of podcasts about leadership in the army. I think a lot of people do that because we compare business to military exercises. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges is when you're in the military, you have to think a lot on your feet. It's very stressful. Same with business. But in the military, you have resources. You have billions of dollars of resources to do things. You don't have that in business. You don't have that in a leadership position. In the military, you may even have a job description. I never had a job description. The, the staff had job descriptions. Some of my senior leaders had job descriptions. I never even had a job description to go by to go, hey, how did I do this year? And I think if you were to ask anybody out there listening right now who's in a senior leadership role, they probably don't even have job description. They're, they're, they're making job descriptions for the people around them to say, here's what you're doing well, here's what you're not doing well. But when you're in that senior position, you got no one behind you going, you're a little out of your lane on this one. And who do you turn to? Like, that's the other frustrating part in the imposter syndrome is who do you turn to? Because you surround yourself with a lawyer who gives you legal advice, you have a you know some sort of financial advisor that tells you what you did thirty days after you did it. But uh, but in the moment, who do you turn to and say, "Where am I? Am I on track? How do I compare to other people?" <laughs> and it can be a very frustrating, lonely moment. And it usually like a, a pimple. It usually pops itself when you're in that stressful moment going, I don't know if I should be the person who's doing this because there's a lot at stake right now. And again, we don't graduate with degrees and the 35 different things we had to deal with during that day. And uh, I think that's a lot of where that imposter syndrome comes from. Would you suggest <clears throat> from your experience, because I think you bring up an excellent point. Obviously, Manufacturing Masters is focused on helping manufacturing owners, leaders, management, and, and their staff too, about best practices, right? It's a place where you can turn to learn these things that they don't teach you in school necessarily. Um, would you recommend to a business owner like you were that's that's tuning into this to maybe get a mastermind group or a a colleague at your level or two i've experienced this personally for the last decade and it's been life changing for me personally to have these people that do what i do in different um verticals if you will but they understand and it's it's a safe space. I can be brutally honest. They can throw bricks at my head and say, what are you thinking? You know, or wake up and smell the coffee, sister. Like, get out of your own way. It's this really safe space and they hold me accountable. Have you and ever done anything like that? And would you recommend it to other manufacturing owners? Uh, yes and yes. 
uh, the uh, biggest partner we have right now, which is the Excellence in Manufacturing Consortium, they have um, owner CEO uh, monthly meetings where owners and CEOs get together and talk about what's really going on in the business. I started doing that with them 15 years ago, and it was such an awakening moment for me to go, I thought I was the only one who was suffering. <laughs> I'm sorry, you get this part too, but I thought I was the only one going through this stuff. And uh, I've seen people share some very intimate moments that they probably wouldn't share with a spouse. That those, uh, if you if you have an organization like that, that you can turn to, uh, those are very uh, healthy moments when you can open up and, and be human and not think that you're alone. So I, I'm glad that you brought that up. It was extremely helpful for me to realize amongst my peers that we're all in this together or we are doing the best that we can with what we have. And that kind of felt good to know that, you know, God wasn't punishing me every day. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> well, and I want to, I want to touch on this a little bit further. So would you say that when you first went to this group did you feel apprehensive at all to be super honest to share and really be vulnerable it took about three meetings for me to actually speak the truth yeah so when you're sitting with uh i i do this all the time so i'm pretty fortunate after i sold my business two years ago that i'm now consulting with probably a hundred different companies and really quickly we want to get past that bs stage and what it looks like is hey darren house business business is fantastic uh -huh. it's weird it's this go-to and the second thing is that you're pressing a little harder and you say do you mind sharing with me what's going on so your second go-to as a leader is we're very busy yeah. great i get your everything is great you're very busy congratulations what's really going on oh uh, can I tell you what's really going? Why didn't we just do that at the beginning? Right. Well, because we so, put on airs. It's like when people ask, how are you? And you automatically default to fine or I'm good. How are you? Yeah. So w wouldn't it be great if we could just skip past? The reason that I brought that up is that I want to demonstrate because we've both been through it. And I know most people watching this, listening to this probably have to. I want to let people know it's okay. It's okay when you find a safe space like that to not waste a bunch of time trying to put on airs. Just be vulnerable. It's okay. What's the worst thing that could happen? It, you know, I think we're afraid someone's going to make fun of us, laugh at us, call us out. It, I can share with you that the people who opened up the most got the most respect from me saying, the, what came across to me was you're willing to be honest mm -hmm. and you're willing to do it in a way that is not being hypocritical, like, oh, we got to deal with that thing. You're putting yourself in a spot that you want to grow. Right. And I think that that bit of the imposter syndrome is you have to, ha you have a choice. We all have this choice. In one respect, you can put on that brave show, but what happens is, is you end up paralyzed in business going, either I have to make everything perfect because I told everybody everything's perfect, or you end up hesitating. And those things will kill you in business. And I see it too often, well, we're just going to wait until things get better, or we're not ready for that opportunity because we put on a show we to put on. The other way you can go with it, if you put yourself, if you're honest with yourself to begin with and put yourself in that vulnerable state is if you're willing to grow and you're either going to grow yourself into more skills that you've been honest that you don't have, or you're going to hire the people who you need to fill that gap or sitting in that room, you may find your potential partner who can say, actually, we're really good at that. Yeah. <laughs> you're going... Well, there's a no, 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 we're, we're good. <laughs> At that moment that you, if you're going to pull back that quick, it, it ended. But if you're willing to keep yourself in that, you know, it, it, I hate using vulnerable, but if you're open to suggestion, 
is that's where you're going to grow. But if you're just there to put on a show, save yourself the time and energy goal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and okay. So this is how it works with you. You always bring up, it's like one good point after another. Um, so I think the thing we could take away from what you just said, and I'm asking this for clarification, we don't have to know how to do everything. It's okay. And oftentimes, the th because we're so caught up, and I don't know if it's ego or self-inflicted, you know, pressure, we think we have to know how to do all the things. When in actuality, it it's often better to just hire somebody. It's okay. Hire some help. Like you said, hey, partner with this person because they're really good at this thing. And it's worth spending the money and it's worth saying, I don't know how to do this, but we need to do it. So I'm going to hire you. Yeah. And you know what? People are, uh, sometimes it is about money, but sometimes, like I said, even partnerships. And sometimes you're going to run into some people who are very generous with their advice, who have been there, done that. You also have to have the courage to listen to those people. Yeah. And I spend a lot of time working with those entrepreneurs. And I am sorry to tell you that, that you know, I wish I could give you a better number. I would say it's 5%. And the number of 5% is the people who actually take the advice and do something with it. Wow. Okay. Mind hey. blown. Uh, let's, so, let's. But if you, if you let me unpack it on a personal note, watch Tony Rollins. If <laughs> there's your answer. We all know we should eat better. We all know we should work on our relationships. We all know we should work on our spiritual side. We all, you know, the, the answers are right all out there. Only 5% of the people who will actually act upon that advice. And again, if you can work hard to put yourself in that open state and take action from some of the help that was given to you, um, even if it's that much, you're going to be that much better going into the next uh, obstacle you have to overcome. But yeah, it, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times that I've sat with companies that just said, great, I understand you're here. You want to get to here. Here's the six things that need to happen. Oh, that's fantastic. No, you actually have to do those six things. <laughs> Well, we're, we're going to think about doing one of them. Okay. But that means you don't really want to change or I haven't, you know, helped you shed some light on some good advice. What are you really looking for? I just want to feel good. And the problem with that is being in a leadership position, that's the uncomfortable spot that sometimes nobody else can be in. Right. Right. Okay. So I, I think we need to do a whole nother episode on ego. But um, let's stay on track with imposter syndrome. I would like to recognize, I think we we touched on this earlier, to recognize when you are a beginner. So let's say for somebody tuning into this, you're not the owner and you're not even a manager, but let's say you're a younger person. It's okay if you show up in a room and you feel this imposter syndrome and you think, yeah, I don't belong here. You know, I'm embarrassed. Somebody's going to call me out. Flip the script. I want to encourage you to do this. And remember, you can't be an imposter if you're a beginner. And I think that's important to understand. I wish I would have gotten that piece of advice um, 30 years ago. But it's okay to be in your lane and recognize I'm a beginner. And the second thing I want you to understand is it's okay to express that. It's okay to say out loud, hey, you know, I'm a little new at this. It it That is so much more appealing than someone who tries to fake it. Because Darren, you've shared with me, I don't know how many stories of people that you ask them, you know, you're maybe interviewing them or you're, you're doing it, you know, a Q and a or a podcast or fill in the blank and they're just bullshitting you and you can tell the entire time. And it's like, why don't we just cut to the chase? Just tell me the truth. It's, it's so much more refreshing, isn't it? Especially from a young person 
is I should be learned to become a little more respectful, but I, I, I do it because I really want to respect people's time because it's the yeah. one common denominator that we all have. Um, just going back to the young people side of things, my, uh, 19 year old is becoming a certified, uh, carpenter and has just become a real estate agent. So he's working on his marketing plan for his business. So I said, Hey, Papa, what would you do if you were me working on marketing plan? And I went, I would interview as many people who you think are successful in real estate as you possibly can. And he went, well, they're not going to give me the time of day. And I went, they're going to give you all the time of day. And he went, why? And I went, think of it. You're a baby. <laughs> you're, mm -hmm. you're non-threatening. You are, uh, new. You are, you are non-comforting. I show up in the room. They're not going to say anything. <laughs> you should poke up the number and ask for advice. So what's been happening for him over the last couple of weeks is all of the really good, generous people who are successful are giving him a ton of advice. He also has 30% of the people who he's calling that never call him back. And he says, so what do I do with that? And I went, put it in your marketing plan. 30% <laughs> of the professionals never call you back. That's the lesson. And again, what you're doing is you're building trust, you're forging relationships, which I think is extremely important. I also want to pick up on something that you said in that comment that is probably the most important thing of all. You said, when I show up in the road, you had the courage to show up. Most people, and this is extremely important, forget the win or lose. You've already won because you decided to show up in the ring. It may be a disaster, but you decided to show up. Half the people that I meet will say, well, you know, I'd like to get into uh, California. Great. Tell me about your last trip to California. Well, mm -hmm. well uh, it's, if you want to get into California, go meet somebody in California today. Uh, well, can we hire someone who did? No, you, no, it doesn't work that way. So that first piece of advice is, you know, do you want to show up? Because if you don't want to show up, then shut up. I'm sorry to say that to you. You have to stop talking about this. If you're not willing to take that next step and show up, nothing is going to work in business. You need to, because as you get older and more mature in a business, you need to show up for your customers. You need to show up for your staff. You need to show up for your supply chain. So if you're not willing to show up day one to figure out how this is going to work, just stop. It's not going to work. So I'm glad that you you, you, see you pressed the button in me, um, but I'm glad you brought that up is they have to want to first show up and bring this full circle into the imposter syndrome. I enjoy working with the people who show up every day. And if you're bleeding and you're struggling, I will give you all the time and resources in the world. If you're complaining and doing nothing, you are a imposter. <laughs> you truly are an imposter. And my advice, well, one of the pieces of advice that I have for people is you have a little of circle of people that you have constant conversations with. You trust them, you bounce ideas, you're problem solving, whether they're your senior leadership team or your mentor group. If you have someone in there that you can identify as an imposter, get them out. You cannot win. You will have terrible conversations that lead nowhere. They'll be very elegant. Mm -hmm. City of will lead nowhere. And to give you a really good example of that, I have people call me all the time and tell me they're experts until I scratch the surface and you realize it's like kind of like a wet paper bag. Darren, I'm an expert in sales. Great. Tell me about your sales experience. Uh, uh, just don't tell me you're a sales expert. It's okay. Stay in your lane. That's a really good example. I've, I was at a, uh, I, I supplied infrastructure builders for 23 years. And uh, so rough and tumble and curse a lot. Uh, people who, build infrastructure. Like we were on the job site when they paved Shea Stadium. We were uh, paving airports in Alaska. We were in mines. You get the idea. And one time I went to a road builders meeting in Newfoundland, middle of nowhere. Their people are awesome. And 
we were at their AGM and I was there because I want to get to know them and sell them products and they're going to see me as a good guy. And I was sitting quietly in the back row of one of the breakout sessions. And there was about maybe 85 people in the room and they, as a group, were deciding on this one thing for the coming year, whether there were rates or something to do with asshole. And I, the man stood up halfway through the meeting and he was a big man. And he said, this is the way it's going to be. If you don't like it, F off. And if you don't like that, all of you could kiss me arcs. And I was at the back of the room going, oh my God, this is crazy. Here we go. And do you know what happened in the room? 84 people looked at each other and they went, he's got a good idea. He's right. Oh my God, I can't believe this just happened. His name was Jim Brown. And all of mine's sharing Jim's name. Because people from there, if, they, if somebody from there actually watches this, they'll be like, yeah, that was Jim Brown. <laughs> Here's why Jim solicited that response. Jim gets the job done. And everybody knows it. So he has equipment all over the place. He's uh, a great problem solver. He um, got himself a helicopter so he can go from job site to job site because time is money. And everybody knows that about Jim. So when Jim stood up and was rude and foul mouthed and unprofessional, they were willing to overlook that because they knew he was true to character. Right. And that's something that I've I still hold to this day about the imposter syndrome is that Jim was so true to character because they knew what he said was true because he's a person who delivers on what they say. And anybody listening today, I would invite them to reflect and say, am I doing what I said I was going to do? If you are, you're probably in the right spot. If you're saying lots of big things and not delivering, you may be one of those people in my group who's not going to be there for very long. Right. Okay. So our, so our imposter not... syndrome topic just split into two parts. One, if you've experienced imposter syndrome, which we all have, let's face it. We're talking about how to recognize it, what to do with it, and how to move forward, right? How to grow. The second side, you've you've opened up to us this side of imposter syndrome, how to recognize it in others, and how to tell if it's getting in their way and they need to just shut up and move on. If I could say, you know, it's like, it's like, um, the difference between feeling like an imposter, but you really should be there. You are equipped to be there. Even if you're a newbie, you were invited. This is your opportunity. If you are experienced and seasoned like you and I are, and we kind of, maybe we feel, feel it creep in to sit back and recognize, um, no, I actually have the skills. I do what I say. I'm okay. I, I should be here. Then there's that other recognizing that other person who they kind of are imposters, right? This is interesting. Somebody that I work with this week, one of the um one of the directors and shareholders continually told that on my sharing this continually would tell the group that in my other job, I make $300,000 a year and I'm very important. <laughs> That's for me. Uh -huh. <laughs> is a red flag. Because yeah. I started to ask myself, why are you telling the room this? <laughs> what, what, we're here to move forward. We're here to get the job done. Why are you telling the room the people this? Well, I need you to know I'm important. Great, you're important. Can we please move on? <laughs> right, right. When you hear that language start to come in that's pulling you away from the objective, 
those are people who have different motives and maybe should not be part of that team. So that was my recommendation for that one person. All I had to do was hear that going, you're not here for this. You just told the room people, I'm not here for you. So then why the hell are you at the table? Well, uh, uh, great. We're now speaking openly and honestly. <laughs> That's a weird thing to say. I make $300,000 a year and I'm very important. Yay. <laughs> Good so, for you. <laughs> way to win a, and again, I'm not doing that. To, the goal is not to be the jerk. I don't, don't want to be the Jim Brown. The goal is to say, if we're truly here for our customer, for the health of this business, to move forward, to grow as a team and set those egos aside, who shouldn't be here right now? And it's usually the one person who says, I'm more important than the situation. That's the imposter that I want out of my circle, out of my life, away from my team. I don't have, I can go see a movie if I want grandma. I don't need it in my life. Right. Right. So I think that's very important. And again, the people who are asking themselves, am I an imposter? I want those people to say, am I doing this because I want to grow? And if you're willing to do that, all you have to do, like you said a best, Allison, or just ask somebody, yeah. somebody that you trust, he's been there, done that. And they'll tell you, you have to be willing to accept what they're telling you and say, how can I grow from this? The other people you need to just get away from me. You're not worth the time and energy. Well, and to recognize whether or not, uh, and I think if you're genuine, you want to recognize, am I an actual imposter? I think that's what you're asking yourself in the moment. And well, I think- Look at your track record. Right, right. That's how you do it. You look back and you went, and I met with you know uh, business leaders, and especially in the last year, who are going, Darren, are we allowed to do, like you're you're telling us to punch punch above our weight class? And I love that. Are are we allowed to do that? <laughs> who are you waiting for? <laughs> oh, Permission. I'll tell you. <laughs> do you want me to tell you? You're you're allowed to punch above your weight class and tell people how good you are if you can deliver. And that's where the growth in the business comes from when you're willing to share with people how good you are and then you deliver. The whole imposter syndrome starts when you stop delivering. If you're delivering, you're allowed to tell people how good you are. They want to be part of your success. But if you have that track record, you know, again, so I, I'm thinking of one company that's now second generation and the, the, the owner's close to 60 going, are we allowed to tell people this? <laughs> you have two generations of success. You're doing great stuff. Oh, okay. I guess so. You need to have that level of confidence to look back and say, yes, we have done some very good things and we're going to go out. So make some big, bold promises and deliver. And that's just how that works when you're trying to grow the business. If you're not willing to do that, you're going to get stuck in imbalanced relationships where you think someone's going to come and save you, or you're going to hire the wrong people who are actually going to get you to where you want to go. Like I said, when I wrote uh, that email from uh, Dawn, I thought he was going to be our savior. And the problem was, is it created this weird imbalance in the relationship that was never going to produce any good results. And that was just as much my fault uh, for letting that happen. I did the same thing in my business, um, giving, thinking somebody was going to be the savior. And for, I unfortunately uh, had them on the team way longer than you did. And it was a detrimental to my business. And so I can totally relate and hot, wholeheartedly agree with you. And it's okay to recognize it quickly. It's not a failed hire. It's not um, a failure of a decision. You're just recognizing it for what it is. I thought this person was going to be the savior. They're not. Let them go. Move on. Right? And I think we get in our way. I did. I got in my own way and kept trying to make something work that wasn't. Right? Oh, it'll work. There was a lot of that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I would say just, 
you know, again, there's no job description in business for those senior leadership roles. So what you have is looking backwards on your results. And if you are out there being uh, positive and uh, caring for others, and most importantly, getting the job done, you've earned the right to stand at the podium. And that's, people are looking to you for that. The problem is, is, as you said about, you know, looking to your peers and looking to these groups, sometimes it's hard to assess, am I doing the right thing? But again, I think if you're confident enough to look at the results that you've done, people want you to keep going. They do want you to be successful because when you're successful, their boats float just as high. Um, yeah. And again, it, 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 uh, it means making some tough decisions along the way and sometimes going, wow, did I ever screw that one up? Okay. <laughs> I, I am never going to forget the rooster. <laughs> I think the crowing only lasted about a week and then it went away. Us, we, it, it, yeah, I own it. I get it. We moved on to another big opportunity when people went, okay, that's great. It's over. I don't need to worry about that. What you can't do is live in fear and let that stuff paralyze you. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and we've got a couple of uh, points, pointers to leave people with. So to recap, I think it's important to recognize that you can't be an imposter when you're a beginner. Two, it's okay to show up and be the word you don't like vulnerable um to i i really think of it as just being honest it's okay to be honest and three if you are a leader business owner um whatever don't be afraid to ask for help as an oldest child i've always struggled with that um and guess what when you ask for help 10 times out of 10 you'll actually get it so that's pretty cool. Um, it's a resource that I think we are overlook quite a bit of the time. And also to, I wanted to share this little trick that I learned from Mel Robbins. She has an amazing podcast, if you don't already listen to it. And she talks about flipping the script. And so I recognize that I'm feeling imposter syndrome. I'm doubting my self-worth or my... Um, qualifications to be in this in this meeting right now she suggests flipping it to gratitude so instead of thinking do i belong here flip it to i'm grateful to be here and i'd never really thought about this before until i heard her podcast recently do you feel like that's a good bit of advice to like wow, think about it. I got invited to this thing to begin with. So I'm just going to be grateful that I'm here. And I have this opportunity, as you said before, to show up. I showed up. So now I have an opportunity to listen, to grow. And if that's what I take away from this, that's a win. Um, yes, with a caveat. Um, I, again, if we're being honest, I feel that I work best when I'm in the most stressful situations. Let's go. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> um, I love problem solving. I love the bigger the challenge. I find it exciting. Um, the number one rule for me in whatever business that I'm involved with is, you know, as a leader, and I come back to military sometimes, your job is to get the job done, first and foremost. We're here to overtake something. We're here to get sales. We're here to keep our people safe. Whatever it is, above and beyond anything else, my job is to get, that's where I feel the pressure, is to get the job done. And there's a, a famous uh, line in a song that goes, no one cares about what you didn't do. So truth be told, you can say all these nice things to yourself and to other people, but if you're not making sales, if you're not making payroll, if that business isn't running, you have a very expensive hobby. 
And that's where a bit of the stress and the loneliness comes into that senior leadership role who's making those big decisions. The part two and, and why I'm saying I'm agreeing with you is if you can't get the job done, number one, and then show kindness to people around you, those people around you will not be able to produce the results you did in step one. And you need that team of people, whether your customers or your staff or your suppliers, you need the kindness you showed to those people to duplicate that for the next step. Otherwise, you're going to be a very, very lonely person who's saying, look at me. And, and that's not healthy. So step one, first and foremost, you have to get the job done because um, um, internal revenue service <laughs> doesn't really care. Right. Yeah, have to get the, like, move a mountain, create something new, have those conversations. You have to have that drive about you that says, my job is to get the job done. I also need to be conscious I'm doing it in a way that I can care for those around me because they're the people who are going to replicate this result for round two and three and four and cumulative growth. Again, if you don't have that recipe that you're just a kind, caring person, you may be all unemployed in the future. And I've got one of these people in the room, the one in the leadership position, has to make a very difficult choice right now. Why? Because someone does. And, and that's part of the, a, a bit of where that loneliness comes in and where's the rule book? There is none. That person in the leadership position is saying, come hell or I, I don't care if we spend all night. I don't care if we spend all weekend. This is getting done. I think that's that doing part that's come up quite a bit in this. The showing up. Yeah. But the showing up, but then the doing. Like you said, you've you've got to, I, I can show up and say, I make $3 million a year and I'm really important. Great. But so I showed up, um, but unless I demonstrate. And I think that's a very important takeaway from this video is that it's the showing up even when you're afraid. Even when you don't have a choice. Right? Sorry. If you don't like that, get out of the leadership position. You, 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 you can't always be consensus. People are not always going to like you. Um, okay. Everything you decide is going to upset someone. Uh, and you just have to keep moving forward. But like I said, with that example of Jim Brown, even though it was rude and all of those things that kind of turn your stomach, People just said, I believe you. Why? Because I know where you're going when you leave here is you're going to go do some big stuff. Yeah. And then that's the, if you're doing that big stuff, recognize it and say, that's why you deserve to be where you're at. So consistency and character, I think, play True. into this as well. It leads to trust. Yeah. Yeah. And we all need that in order to do business with somebody or have a relationship with somebody. It's the only thing you got. Transfer me a million dollars today. Oh, okay. Wait a second. <laughs> like that's what happens every day. And again, you can say we have agreements in courts, but in the end, it's just, I trust you or I don't. That's it. And that trust comes from the fact that you want to produce good results every day. And I believe you. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we need to wrap up here and I think well, four words that I learned recently that are life-changing and I think tie in heavily with this. And again, I got this from Mel Robbins, so I have to give her um, and her daughter um, Sawyer all the credit for this. Accept where you're at. So again, no matter if you're younger or older, if you are in a, in a room, in a meeting, on a job site, fill in the blank. I think what we've talked about today is, first of all, show up. And secondly, I think that that's where these four words come into play. If I feel imposter syndrome, um, accept where I am. So recognize it. And then I think your point 
that is my big takeaway from today is then you what are you going to do are you going to be vulnerable are you going to share your truth are you going to ask for help are you going to follow through are you going to you know demonstrate so what are you going to do and i think that's the answer to imposter syndrome if i had to you know and we're not doctors we're not psychologists this is certainly uh not some board certified uh, medical advice but would you agree i have a degree in geography i just want to clarify that <laughs> well and i'm a marketer so i i don't know <laughs> should we be here <laughs> probably not <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the doing that's pretty powerful so before we wrap up, I just wanted to ask you a question. Is there anything that we didn't talk about that I didn't ask you that you wish that we would have covered to help somebody listening to this or watching this to be a more effective leader, to help them get out of their own way and move past imposter syndrome? Yeah. I'm uh I think in bullet points and whiteboards. So I I would say first and foremost, it's a place of growth. So anybody listening, you can see it as a bad thing that uh can paralyze you, or you can turn it into a good thing that you can use it to grow. And those are the people, like I said, I have utmost respect for because they're willing to continually as they grow as entrepreneurs put themselves in that position. And again, that's where your future partnerships, your future sales, that's where change can actually happen. So don't fool yourself by putting the mask on every day. Some days you just have to well, you get through it. Um, but you take those moments to grow and be proud of what you accomplished. I think that's extremely important. And, and most importantly, and we said it briefly, I'll come back to it again. Don't be afraid to punch above your weight loss. And that's extremely important because I want to buy into what you're doing. And if you're not proud of your accomplishments, I'm going to wonder why I should be working with you and why I shouldn't give somebody else my money. And if you're producing those good results, tell people. My, my manufacturing business, it was in the middle of nowhere. Like people made fun of how remote it was. So I already knew we had a black eye when we started that people were making fun of us saying, you're not good enough or smart enough or educated enough to run this type of business. By the time we were done, I have my competitors going, I hate you so much. Everybody keeps talking about you. And <laughs> going, as, long as, as long as you're talking about me, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> so again, what do we do? We told big, bold things, but we went and did it. And I spent, you know, just there alone, 20 some years on the road with customers making sure we actually did what we said we were going to do. And that trust allowed us the opportunity to keep growing that business. Mic drop. Well, I appreciate your insight and expertise and vulnerability and sharing. And I think the thing that I have learned the most from you over the years is that you, you do what you're suggesting and recommending. And I think that that's very powerful. It's, um, it's one thing to tell people, right. Um, what is it? Do as I say, not as I do, but I think this with you and with, um, in manufacturing, I think it's imperative that, what we're telling you to do, we want you to actually do it. We're doing it too. Like, like yeah. I said, as long as people are using some of those moments to create more wealth and more opportunity, I feel good of that. Because I know that when business owners are out being successful, they hire more people, they create more wealth for their community. And that is not something you should ever apologize for. There, there's a lot of people who depend on you to be successful. 
And I say, keep going, keep doing brave things because it can only benefit our communities. Absolutely. Well, and for anybody watching this, if you have a question or you want to contribute to this conversation, Darren and I would love to hear from you. So please feel free to reach out to us. I would say DM us on LinkedIn would probably be the easiest way. And um, we're happy and eager to um, hear what you have to say and to have a conversation with you and help you be more successful. So thank you so much for showing up, Mr. Mitchell, every day and for, I think, really helping other manufacturers keep going and keep improving. And um, I just really appreciate your authenticity and your willingness to, you know, lead out loud and yeah, really to... Um, I don't know. I think be the poster child for here, not necessarily like, here's how not to do it. Here's how to do it. And here's how to just be a truth, you know, a truth teller and, um, and really just show up. They could just be the rooster on KFC. <laughs> and Allison back at you. I, uh, I appreciate the countless hours that you put into sharing the messaging and having the courage to keep asking the right questions because as you, you said it yourself it's not about having the answers it's about having the courage to ask the questions and again that's where the growth happens if you're willing to be open to it all right with that we'll leave you there's plenty more opportunities to connect with other manufacturing experts too on the manufacturing masters platform so i highly recommend that you take a look at that and really Utilize. 130 experts yeah. left far more depth than I ever will. <laughs> I keep yep. meeting the experts and going, oh my God, I made so many mistakes. <laughs> well, it was a white. Oh man. <laughs> and that's the reason that you assembled all of them. So I just want everybody to remember that that's an invaluable resource to take advantage of. And um, there are no imposters there. I can tell you that. So. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you. If you're not already, subscribe to the Manufacturing Masters podcast on Apple Music or Spotify. And for a deeper dive, head on over to manufacturing-masters.com. It's everything they never taught you in school.